Hello, everyone. I couldn't make videos to have a lot of work in the office. From now on, I hope I can make regular videos. Anyway today I'll discuss about our solar system. We all know our solar system has 8 planets including our Earth. So friends we all don't know about this 8 planets properly. So my name is Anna Watson you're watching my universe. Today's tropic is Mercury. Before I start I want to say that please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon. So let's go. Mercury is the smallest and innermost planet in the solar system. Its orbit around the Sun takes 87.97 days, the shortest of all the planets in the solar system. It is named after the Roman deity Mercury, the messenger of the gods. Like Venus, Mercury orbits the Sun within Earth's orbit as an inferior planet, and its apparent distance from the Sun as viewed from Earth never exceeds 28 degrees. This proximity to the Sun means the planet can only be seen near the western horizon after sunset or eastern horizon before sunrise, usually in twilight. At this time, it may appear as a bright star-like object, but is often far more difficult to observe than Venus. The planet telescopically displays the complete range of phases, similar to Venus and the Moon, as it moves in its inner orbit relative to Earth which recurs over its synodic period of approximately 116 days. Mercury rotates in a way that is unique in the solar system. It is tidally locked with the Sun in a 3 to 2 spin orbit resonance, meaning that relative to the fixed stars, it rotates on its axis exactly three times for every two revolutions it makes around the Sun day as seen from the Sun, in a frame of reference that rotates with the orbital motion. It appears to rotate only once every two Mercurian years. An observer on Mercury would therefore see only one day every two Mercurian years. Mercury's axis has the smallest tilt of any of the solar system's planets. Its orbital eccentricity is the largest of all that known planets in the solar system. At perihelion, Mercury's distance from the Sun is only about two-thirds of its distance at aphelion. Mercury's surface appears heavily cratered and is similar in appearance to the Moon's, indicating that it has been geologically inactive for billions of years. Having almost no atmosphere to retain heat, it is surface temperatures that vary diurnally more than on any other planet in the solar system, ranging from 100 K at night to 700 K during the day across the equatorial regions. The polar regions are constantly below 180 K. The planet has no known natural satellites. Two spacecraft have visited Mercury, Mariner 10 flew by in 1974 and 1975, and Messenger, launched in 2004, orbited Mercury over 4,000 times in four years before exhausting its fuel and crashing into the planet's surface on April 30, 2015. The BP Colombo spacecraft is planned to arrive at Mercury in 2025. Physical characteristics. Mercury appears to have a solid silicate crust and mantle overlying a solid, iron sulfide outer core layer, a deeper liquid core layer, and a solid inner core. Mercury is one of four terrestrial planets in the solar system, and is a rocky body like Earth. It is the smallest planet in the solar system, with an equatorial radius of 2,439.7 km, 1, 516.0 miles. Mercury is also smaller, albeit more massive, than the largest natural satellites in the solar system, Ganymede and Titan. Mercury consists of approximately 70% metallic and 30% silicate material. Mercury's density is the second highest in the solar system at 5.427 g/cm3, only slightly less than Earth's density of 5.515 g/cm3. 3. If the effect of gravitational compression were to be factored out from both planets, the materials of which Mercury is made would be denser than those of Earth with an uncompressed density of 5.3 grams slash cm3 versus Earth's 4.4 grams slash cm3. Mercury's density can be used to infer details of its inner structure. Although Earth's higher density results appreciably from gravitational compression, particularly at the core, 
Mercury is much smaller and its inner regions are not as compressed. Therefore, for it to have such a high density, its core must be large and rich in iron. Geologists estimate that Mercury's core occupies about 55% of its volume, for Earth this proportion is 17%. Research published in 2007 suggests that Mercury has a molten core. Surrounding the core is a 500 to 700 kilometers, 310 to 430 miles, mantle consisting of silicates. Based on data from the Mariner 10 mission and Earth-based observation, Mercury's crust is estimated to be 35 kilometers, 22 miles, thick. One distinctive feature of Mercury's surface is the presence of numerous narrow ridges, extending up to several hundred kilometers in length. It is thought that these were formed as Mercury's core and mantle cooled and contracted at a time when the crust had already solidified. Mercury's core has a higher iron content than that of any other major planet in the solar system, and several theories have been proposed to explain this. The most widely accepted theory is that Mercury originally had a metal silicate ratio similar to common chondrite meteorites, thought to be typical of a solar system's rocky matter, and a mass approximately 2.25 times its current mass. Early in the solar system's history, Mercury may have been struck by a planetesimal of approximately one-sixth that mass and several thousand kilometers across. 33. The impact could have stripped away much of the original crust and mantle, leaving the core behind as a relatively major component. A similar process, known as the giant impact hypothesis, has been proposed to explain the formation of the Moon. Alternatively, Mercury may have formed from the solar nebula before the Sun's energy output had stabilized. It would initially have had twice its present mass, but as the protosun contracted, Temperatures near Mercury could have been between 2,500 and 3,500 K and possibly even as high as 10,000 K. Much of Mercury's surface rock could have been vaporized at such temperatures, forming an atmosphere of rock vapor that could have been carried away by the solar wind. A third hypothesis proposes that the solar nebula caused drag on the particles from which Mercury was accreting, which meant that lighter particles were lost from the accreting material and not gathered by Mercury. Each hypothesis predicts a different surface composition, and there are two space missions set to make observations. MESSENGER, which ended in 2015, found higher than expected potassium and sulfur levels on the surface suggesting that the giant impact hypothesis and vaporization of the crust and mantle did not occur because potassium and sulfur would have been driven off by the extreme heat of these events. Papi Colombo, which will arrive at Mercury in 2025, will make observations to test these hypotheses. The findings so far would seem to favor the third hypothesis, however, further analysis of the data is needed. Surface Geology Mercury's surface is similar in appearance to that of the Moon, showing extensive mare-like plains and heavy cratering, indicating that it has been geologically inactive for billions of years. Because knowledge of Mercury's geology had been based only on the 1975 Mariner 10 flyby and terrestrial observations, it is the least understood of the terrestrial planets. As data from Messenger Orbiter are processed, this knowledge will increase. For example, an unusual crater with radiating troughs has been discovered that scientists called the spider. It was later named Apollodorus. Biological considerations. There may be scientific support, based on studies reported in March 2020, for considering that parts of the planet Mercury may have been habitable, and perhaps that life forms, albeit likely primitive microorganisms, may have existed on the planet. Orbit and rotation. Mercury has the most eccentric orbit of all the planets, its eccentricity is 0.21 with its distance from the Sun ranging from 46 million to 70 million kilometers. It takes 87.969 Earth days to complete an orbit. The diagram illustrates the effects of the eccentricity, showing Mercury's orbit overlaid with a circular orbit having the same semi-major axis. Mercury's higher velocity when it is near perihelion is clear from the greater distance it covers in each five-day interval.
In the diagram the varying distance of Mercury to the Sun is represented by the size of the planet, which is inversely proportional to Mercury's distance from the Sun. Day this varying distance to the Sun leads to Mercury's surface being flexed by tidal bulges raised by the Sun that are about 17 times stronger than the moons on Earth. Combined with a 3 to 2 spin orbit resonance of the planet's rotation around its axis, it also results in complex variations of the surface temperature. The resonance makes a single solar day on Mercury last exactly two Mercury years, or about 176 Earth days. Mercury's orbit is inclined by 7 degrees to the plane of Earth's orbit, the ecliptic, as shown in the diagram on the right. As a result, transits of Mercury across the face of the Sun can only occur when the planet is crossing the plane of the ecliptic at the time it lies between Earth and the Sun, which is in May or November. This occurs about every seven years on average. Mercury's axial tilt is almost zero, with the best measured value as low as 0.027 degrees. This is significantly smaller than that of Jupiter which has the second smallest axial tilt of all planets at 3.1 degrees. This means that to an observer at Mercury's poles, the center of the Sun never rises more than 2.1 arc minutes above the horizon. At certain points on Mercury's surface, an observer would be able to see the Sun peak up a little more than two-thirds of the way over the horizon, then reverse and set before rising again, all within the same Mercurian day. This is because approximately four Earth days before perihelion, Mercury's angular orbital velocity equals its angular rotational velocity so that the Sun's apparent motion ceases. Closer to perihelion, Mercury's angular orbital velocity then exceeds the angular rotational velocity. Thus, to a hypothetical observer on Mercury, the Sun appears to move in a retrograde direction. Four Earth days after perihelion, the Sun's normal apparent motion resumes. A similar effect would have occurred if Mercury had been in synchronous rotation. The alternating gain and loss of rotation over revolution would have caused a libration of 23.65 degrees in longitude. I hope you will understand. If you have any questions about Mercury, ask me in the comments section. I will try my best to answer. If you like this video then give a like to the video and comment me how it is. Please subscribe my channel my universe and press the bell icon. I'll try to give regular videos. And comment me which topic video you want to get new videos. Never forget to subscribe my channel because it's treasure of knowledge. Thank you.